I've invented a card trick. I've made up a card trick of my own. It's a work in progress, so we'll see how it goes. I've made a prediction. And my prediction is going to be guarded by the Jack of Hearts. Look who it is. Yes, the James of Hearts. <laughs> so this card trick involves the Ace, Two, Three, Four, Five, Six, Seven, Eight, Nine, Ten of Spades. Brady, you're my volunteer for this. I would ask you to shuffle this up so it's all fair. But you're, shuffle. You're happy to shuffle? Yeah. I'll do one of these ones. Like Vegas. The Vegas style. <laughs> Are you happy that that pack was shuffled, Brady? Yes. Excellent. I'm going to try and make it even more happy that you've got completely free choice. I'm just going to give you some choices as we go along, right? We're going to deal this out so we have five cards each. So I'm just going to give you some choice. Do you want the left or the right? Right. Uh, have the right. I'll have the left. Do you want the left or the right? Right. You're having the right again? Yep. Yeah, I'll have the left. I mean, I can even, yeah, it doesn't matter. I can show you. Do you want the five or the seven? Five. You're having the five. I'll have the seven. Do you want the six or the eight? Six. You're having the six, I'll have the eight. I mean, there's an ace there, do you want it? Yes. Okay, right, and I'll take whatever's left. Okay, ten, let's see what we've got. So we've got five cards each. And also, I want to arrange them in order. So I'm going to ask you to arrange them smallest to largest, smallest on the left to the largest on the right. I'm doing the same. So we've got two sets of five. I've got three, seven, eight, nine, ten. You've got ace, two, four, five, and six. Happy with that? Great. We've made five pairs. Are you happy with that as well? And I'm going to mark the difference with some red cards. So let's look at the first pair, six and a three. Well, what's the difference between six and a three? I'm going to mark it as a three. The next pair is a five and a seven. Well, the difference is a two. Difference between four and eight, I'll mark it with a red card as a four. And difference between two and nine, I'll mark it with a seven. And an ace and a ten, I'll mark that with a nine. And so I've got five red cards now. What do they add up to? 16, 20, 25. 25. So we have a look at our prediction over here being guarded. 25. Now, did you feel like you had a free choice? Did you feel like they could have gone in any order? Did you feel like that could have been any total? I felt like when you started turning them over and giving me one to choose and stuff, that maybe you were starting to play funny... Hmm, interesting. So that was all misdirection, actually, on my part. It actually doesn't matter which way I deal these out to you. Uh, I'm going to have five cards, you have five cards, and the answer is always going to be 25. That's going to be fixed, that's always going to be true. So it's a mathematical effect called Prosvalov identity. It is a mathematical effect. A lot of magic tricks are maths effects dressed up. I'm going to make uh, an appeal to any magicians watching this video. Can you find a way of using this effect that's perhaps better than what I was trying here. I'm interested in a more interesting way to dress this up, to present this. I am going to talk about the effect itself, but uh, I would be really interested in uh, finding a lovely way to dress it up as a magic trick. Uh, but let's look at the effect itself. So we had the ace to ten, and we were shuffling it up. It doesn't matter what order they're in. And then we were dealing them out, five and five. And again, it really doesn't matter. So here's five for you, here's five for me. And then we were ordering it. So we're doing smallest to largest. By the way, total number of ways we could have arranged these cards then in this magic trick, 126. So there's 126 different ways we could have arranged these, a set of five and a set of five. But now we're gonna arrange them in order. So I'm rearranging my cards and you were doing the same, weren't you? They were going from smallest to largest, left to right. From my point of view, I've got my cards going smallest to largest and your cards are going largest to smallest. In my side, they're in ascending order. Your side, they're in descending order. And then we were marking the difference. Nice thing about this trick is we're looking at the differences now. You're never going to get three values the same, three values or more. You can get two values the same. So the red cards should be enough to mark out the differences. That's, that worked out kind of nicely. Impossible to get three, four, five the same. Let's do it again for this trick. Let's see if we get the same total. So I've got a five this time. I've got a one, I've got a four and a seven, so that's a difference of three. Two and a nine, a difference of seven, and an ace and a 10, a difference of nine. And if we add up these values, I've got it to be 25 again. So why does this work? Some people watching this might want to go away and try and prove for themselves that this is always 25, that this always works, uh, and you're welcome to do that. If you want um, a pointer just to get you going, 
this is the important thing to notice. We have these five pairs that we've made. Each pair contains a big card and a low card. Uh, what do I mean? I mean a big card is greater than five and a low card would be less than or equal to five. Look, this pair is an eight and a three, which is a big and a small. This pair was a five and a six, so this was the big and the small was over here. Big and a small, big, small, big, small. And even if one of us had, had all the big cards, it still would have worked out that way. It would still have worked out. So the first thing we need to show is that's always true. Now let's just ignore the values that I've got here. And then let's just imagine this pair, they're both less than or equal to five. They're both small cards. And this argument is gonna work for any pair that I pick. If those are two small cards, automatically I know that's a small card because it's on the left and it was smaller. Automatically I know those are small cards because it's on the left of this one, which are automatically smaller. Now let's have a look. I've got six small cards. Six small cards, which are meant to be less than or equal to five, that's impossible. That argument will work with any pair and that argument will work with um, cards that are greater than five. If we had a pair that were both big, you would have the same problem. So that's it, that's your proof there. Every pair will have a big card and a small card. Great. Now let's have a look at the next step. I mean, I don't know what order these pairs are gonna be in, but let's call them big and small. So I've got big card one. It's always the big value minus the small value. We're always having the positive value being the difference. So it's always going to be the big value minus the small value for the five pairs that we made. I don't know what they are exactly, but it is, the effect is adding all the big values together and subtracting all the small values. So we're not that far away from the answer then. We just rearrange it. We know that if we add all the big values, the big values are six plus seven plus eight plus nine plus 10, subtracting those small values, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, and that is 25. And so it will always be 25. A couple of ways to extend this. We don't have to use the values one to 10. What happens if I use values 1 to 12, or 1 to 14, 1 to 100? Well, it turns out your answer will be fixed as well. Again, it doesn't matter how you arrange the cards, how you split it all up. We do that process, we get the same value. Uh, what's that value going to be? You might want to have a look for yourself, but I'm going to tell you what it is. Do the general example. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, these are our cards, right? And they're going to go up to, well, there's going to be a card, let's call it N. And then it's going to go n plus 1, n plus 2, right? and we're going to go all the way up to 2n. Right? These are our cards. Then the whole argument works just the same. So this final step here, when I add all the big values and subtract all the small values, it's going to be exactly the same. These are the big values here. n plus 1 plus n plus 2, and this will carry on, 2n, and then we're going to subtract all the small values. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus Right, minus n. Well, what's that? You can think of it this way. n plus 1 minus 1. n plus 2 minus 2. n plus 3 minus 3. Each pair would then have a value of uh, n plus n plus n plus n plus n lots of n. It's n squared. The value will always be n squared. In my example, n, which is kind of the midpoint, was 5. So the answer was 25, 5 squared. And now the other little twist to this, the numbers don't have to be consecutive. So my example is one to 10. They don't have to be consecutive. They could be prime numbers or square numbers or any selection of random integers if you want. And the value, I don't know what the value is gonna be, but the value will always be fixed. This episode has been brought to you by Audible. And as they like to say, audiobooks can help you become a better you. Certainly some of my most relaxing and rewarding times just lately have involved listening to Audible titles. In fact, there are two in particular that I'd like to mention. Both are true stories. The first one is Endurance, the story of Shackleton and his crewmates stranded in Antarctica when their ship was lost to the pack ice. It's one of the most amazing tales in history, and it's a really compelling listen. The other, this was a bit of a surprise packet for me, is called Dead Mountain. This tells the story of a group of Russian students who died in rather mysterious circumstances while on a hiking holiday. This one's read by the author himself and it's a really addictive audiobook. Now to get you started, Audible's offering a free audiobook and two Audible originals if you go to audible.com 
slash number file or text number file to 500 500. If you haven't checked out Audible Originals, they're a real great mixed bag of audio titles from storytellers covering all sorts of topics. Make sure you do give them a look. And again, audible.com slash number file or text number file to 500 500. Thanks to Audible for supporting this episode. Riffle shuffle is this guy. You riffle them together is the way we say it. They sometimes do it on the table this way. You know, a casino dealer will do, will do that. That's riffle. This is called overhand, and the other one I call schmushing.